Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at ISIS filtering in all of its different types. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is filtering between levels. The next thing we'll look at is just filtering on an individual router. And then finally, we'll look at some prefix suppression and kind of a, a what I think is a really cool feature in ISIS. So when we're talking about filtering between levels, we have here our level two link, sorry, level two. And then this is a level one area here. So we've already configured this on the routers. And if you haven't seen the videos, I'm going to post the playlist in the description below. And we saw that by default, when doing L1 to L2, we had two different things happen. One is that all of the L1 routers were redistributed into level two. And then we saw that none of the L2 routers made its way into L1. Instead, what happened is all the L1 routers just have a default route that's pointing up to R1. So we can verify this on R3 that all we have is the default route. And then what we could do is let's take a look at what it looks like to filter routes coming from L1 into L2. So this first part is a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a quick review, but let's just look at R3, show IP route ISIS, begin gateway. So as you can see, we're just getting this quad zero heading up to R1. So that's the first type of filtering in ISIS. This is kind of done by default, but it is the first type of filtering. So the next type is let's filter these R3 and R4 heading up to R2. So first let's look at R2 and let's see what's in our routing table. Okay. So we have, we're, we're just going to take a look at router three's loopback because it's simplest. So we have a router three loopback that we're learning from one. So router one is what's doing the redistribution. So let's over to, head over to router one and I'm going to configure some filtering to get R3 out of level two. And before we do that, I actually have a couple things that I have pre-configured. So let me do a show run section prefix list because I already have a prefix list set up. It's really simple. You guys don't need to learn prefix list, but we're just going to deny 3333 slash 32 and we're going to permit all. And then we also have a route map that is going to be matching that prefix list. So this route map here, R3 filter, match IP address prefix list R3. So just to save some time, I already have that configured. So let's head into router ISIS. And all we're gonna do is the redistribute command again. And it's this time, well, you have to do ISIS IP, but this time we're gonna do level one into level two. So we didn't need this in the first case, you know, from level two, or sorry, from level one into level two, it was kind of done automatically. But what we're doing is now we're just gonna add on this route map, R3 underscore filter. And if we head over to router two, router three is gone, but my transit link is still here and router four is still here. So the configuration is, is really simple. It's just kind of knowing where that is. So let me do a show run section router ISIS. You know, it's, it kind of seems weird that you're going in the same ISIS process. We're not really doing redistribution, but that's how the um, Cisco iOS kind of just refers to it. So we're doing redistribution from level one into level two with this route map that has our filters. So filtering between level one and level two, really simple. Um, from level two into level one, it's done by default. This other redistribution command I have here, this was the leaking. So I, again, in the playlist before, if you view the route leaking video, you'll know where that command came from. But from level one into level two, it gives you everything by default. We just need this route map to filter out. So between areas, easy. I mean, sorry, between levels, easy. The next type of filtering we're going to do is let's head down to R3. 
And R3, what I'm going to do is just filter R4's loopback. We're still going to allow everything else. We're just going to filter R4's loopback. So the thing that makes this kind of interesting is just like an OSPF, where an OSPF, all routers in an area need to have the same database. In ISIS, all routers within a level need to have the same database as all other routers in that level. So on R3, what we're going to do is let's take a look at router ISIS, which we already have up. And we see we have the quad 0, 1, and 4. So let's go ahead and conf t. And again, I already have a prefix list, so I show run section prefix list. Um, I don't need a route map in this case. I only need a prefix list that we're just denying 4444 slash 32. We're permitting everything else. It's router ISIS lab and it's distribute list. And there are some options. So you could do a route, you could use a route map. You could also use an access list. I like to use prefix lists. They're simple. Um, the name is R4 and we just say in. So now show ISIS, I am no longer receiving that route from four. Now, the only problem with this is you might be thinking, well, doesn't this break ISIS because, you know, we're not learning the route anymore. And you, you just said a minute ago that they all have to have the same database. Well, that's the, the caveat with this. The caveat here is that if I do a show ISIS database, and I specifically look at R4's LSP in detail, I'm still learning it. So yes, it saves me, you know, it makes my routing table cleaner, but it's not going to help your resources on the link state database side. So if you're trying to filter out LSPs, you can only do that from one level to another. You can't do that on an individual router. Okay, so that's easy. Um, we've seen between levels, we've seen on an individual router. The final thing we're gonna see is prefix suppression, which is kind of a cool feature, especially when you have large networks. So let's take a look at R7's routing table. So let's head over to R7. Show IP route ISIS. So I have all these links here, um, the link between two and five, the link between two and six, the link between five and six. If we look at the diagram, we can see that we don't really need any of those links, right? These are all just transit links. Now our network is pretty small, so it's not a huge deal, but imagine you're a service provider you have 500,000 routers. Each router is connected with a slash 31 or a slash 30, and you just are filled with tons and tons and tons of these things. A great way to lessen the load on the routers, decrease the number of prefix, decrease your LSPs, your link state database, is to just take these routes out of the routing table. Now, the problem is that we still need to run ISIS on these links, right? So like, let's take a look between um, R2 and R6. We still need ISIS running on this interface if we want the loopbacks to be able to be sent, you know, through ISIS. So how do we get these links to run ISIS, but not advertise themselves into the protocol? That is prefix suppression. So prefix suppression is pretty cool. Um, there's two ways to do it. So the first way I'll do it is on router two, we're just gonna turn off prefix suppression on these two interfaces, okay? We're not gonna touch this, this link to R1 or anything. We're just gonna turn off prefix suppression on gig 05 and gig 06. Uh, I need to change to that. And let's head over to router two. 
D. So let's just do interface range gig zero five six. And the command is really simple. It's just no ISIS advertise prefix. Done. Now R7 is still going to learn about it because R6 and R5 are still advertising that prefix. So we can go to R5 and R6 and turn them off as well. But for those routers, I'm going to do something a little bit different. And the reason is, is all of these interfaces, like let's look at R6, all of these interfaces can be suppressed. Same with this router. All of our interfaces can be suppressed. All I need to do is just advertise the loopback. Well, there's a pretty cool feature in ISIS that's, well, it's just prefix suppression, but the way it's implemented is pretty cool. So let's go to R5. And what I'm going to do first is in router ISIS is I'm going to make the loopback a passive interface. And then I'll use the command advertise passive only. So we made this interface loopback zero is passive. We're only going to advertise passive. If I head over to router six, I could do the same exact thing. Comp T router ISIS lab passive interface is going to be loopback zero and then advertise passive only. Now, if I head over to router seven, you can see my routing table is way smaller, right? I, I actually don't have any of the 10 dots. And a part of the reason is that I already configured this loopback zero passive and advertise passive only on router seven. So nothing, right? Just the loopbacks. So this is an awesome feature in ISIS, uh, very useful if you have a large network and you still need to have your loopbacks in there for, you know, BGP sessions or maybe LDP, or maybe you set your users as a passive, which you would normally do anyway. But let's say like, for example, on R7, we had a link here that went to a switch that had all of our access ports on it. Well, we would take this interface and make it a passive link and then still advertise into the network. Works the same way. So overall, another cool way to do filtering, a great way to scale your network to kind of keep things in scope. Um, but overall, you know, we looked at redistribution between levels and how to do filtering between levels. We looked at filtering on a single router and then looking at the prefix suppression feature. I would say, you know, you now have the tools to do filtering anywhere in IS to IS. Um, I believe this is going to be my last video in this series. I may do an ISIS video in the future on some random features or something that I come across. But if you have any questions, comments, or something you would like me to cover, please leave it in the comments below. And thank you for watching.